This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. Where are you, Auburn fans? Welcome to No Huddle, your source for Auburn football news and discussion, part of the E2C Network. I'm AJ Richardson, and I'm also here with Jared Davis. We're going to be talking about the Aggie Dogs or whatever they're called over there, you know, in <laughs> Texas a and land and whatever college the, station. The Fighting Jimbo Fishers? I don't know. What are they? I mean, they're not very much fighting, if you're asking me. They're three and six, just like Auburn, and with way better talent than Auburn. I mean, if you look at the numbers. Yeah, they had the <laughs> – they they uh, I believe they may have landed the number one recruiting class of all time. Yeah. Not well, just they, like they, last year, but all time. And they were preseason ranked. Think about it. They're preseason ranked number six, which I so, I, I, I said was dumb at the time because I I know yeah. Jimbo, but yeah, not the, I didn't I didn't envision this. Yeah, I I didn't envision this implosion. I thought they were going to be like a six and six, maybe eight and four type team, just because of how much talent and, and Jimbo. I mean, he has one. Like think about it, FSU, but it's just showing. I think Texas A&M is about to pay. However million dollars buyout for Jimbo in the next couple of years. I mean, you're freaking th- three and six, like, and Texas a and is not that type of team. Like they, they can win a lot more than that. It's just yeah. truly crazy to me. Yeah. For everybody that's like, well, Auburn's three and six. You're right. And we just fired our coach. <laughs> right. So, like the a and a it, bad spot, man. Cause they, 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 you know, they want to do what Auburn just did, but to do that, they got to pay 85 million. Right. And well, I, and we took a pretty big risk on Harson, who was pretty, you know, untested in the, you know, Power Five conferences, and you know that that kind of shows me, you know, Jimbo Fisher, who's also, I mean, he's been in the Power Five. I mean, he, you know, on paper, probably deserves that, but you know, the record and even last year, I mean, was a pretty big disappointment for Texas A and M, and where they went eight and four, and. You know, you're just like, wow. Uh, I I I'm really just thinking about you know Auburn's next hire also kind of in this whole world of you know Texas A&M. You know they've got you know a pretty you know high profile coach like Jimbo Fisher got pretty good recruiting class, well great recruiting class this last year, and yet they're still struggling. And and to me that shows coaching is a lot. Coaching means a lot to how these teams do because I think recruiting gets you to a certain level but the in-game coaching and the practices and how your team performs means so much more and so i i I, if we go after you know auburn goes after this big name coach i hope they're able to also coach on the field because i think jimbo has seen his his twilight days before and now he's 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 going downhill and it's kind of similar to me you know what i'm seeing with you know saban now I think Saban's kind of on that downward trajectory. And, you know, Jimbo's already there. (laughs) You know what some Bama fans have actually typed on a computer or iPhone and pressed submit on? They said, we need to fire Saban and go get Kirby. No (laughs) way, dude. (laughs) Like, Kirby, who probably has a better program than you have right now, and he's at his alma mater. Yeah, sure. What? No, Kirby but, is not leaving. But that's what they think, dude. They think that. Like, people are making fun of, oh, you're not going to get Lane. We may not get Lane. Here's the difference between most Auburn fans that I know and most other schools. I, I We will admit, we may not get Lane. Like, we can admit that. But yeah. we think there's a possibility. A lot of mm-hmm. schools' fans are just delusional about a lot of things. I'm like, I mean, they don't follow it up with the, yeah, this isn't going to happen. Like, oh, this is definitely happening. I'm like, yeah. it may not. That's the, to me that really is. The, and I know there's a lot of Auburn delusional fans, but the ones I communicate with, they're they're like, hey, I think it's a possibility. I'm really excited about it, but but yeah, it may not happen. I mean, they may not. Right. He, he may not choose to come here. Right. Well, and I think for me, when I'm thinking about you know head coaching stuff, you know, you know the Jimbo Fishers of the world, those are the big names that you want to go after. But you also have to be pretty realistic, and that even if Auburn throws this a huge amount of money, you know, say we did truly want somebody like Kirby smart. Kirby smart's not going to care if we threw $50 million at him. Yeah, He's He's going to say, I'm, I'm staying at Georgia where I'm winning national championships. Our our only hope to get Kirby out of there is for the NFL to come calling. And every Uh, college coach for whatever reason has that itch. Yeah. And 
Um, I think it'll happen one day. I think they'll come calling. Will and they probably already have. Will he take that call? I don't know. But that's the he's not leaving. He's at his alma mater. And right. Like why would you only leave your alma mater if your alma mater's you know I don't know Missouri. Sorry Missouri. <laughs> nah. <laughs> if it's if it's Missouri and Texas comes calling, you you leave right? Or Vandy, you know. That's yeah, or Vandy. A, there you go. Same sorry, same. Yeah. sorry, Missouri. Let's go to Vandy because they're cool with this because they have they're really smart. They got other things to focus on. If right. you're Vandy and Auburn comes calling, you're probably gonna take the call. It's very uh, true. But if you're at your alma mater at LSU, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, Tennessee, you ain't taking the call anywhere else. Right, and, and it's kind of the same thing. Now we're looking at you know Cadillac, who's our interim head coach. I think if Cadillac gets a halfway decent offer, you know, anywhere else, but he also has an offer for the next coaching staff to be somewhere on staff, he's probably staying at Auburn because the dude loves Auburn. Yeah, he's not good. Yeah, he's not going anywhere unless um, a um, let's say something like a um, Arkansas State's probably too big of a program at this current moment. Let's mm-hmm. say Cadillac does have a really good end of the year, right? We we win the two home games and we fight really hard at Bama and a smaller school says hey I, I i want that guy you know right okay now you're talking head coaching job right so okay but right. yeah, he's not gonna leave to be an rb coach somewhere else if he can if auburn offers right well you know from going from a position of simply a you know, simply you know it's it's a running back position coach and the top sec like that's already pretty good but to make that jump to the head coaching that's pretty I don't know how many teams would want to risk it on somebody like that, but who knows? I mean, if he, like you said, if he does well, I think you have a better chance of it in the future of, you know, somebody saying even potentially like offensive coordinator or some, something else that he might, he might go for. But other than that, I think he stays. I do too. I think if you keep him on, I think you, and again, the new coach is coming in and I don't want to give them any, We've done this too much. you got to do this. I want the new coach (laughs) to come in and get to do what he wants to do. Um, I would encourage them to take a look at Cadillac, and let's say he keeps him. I would give him some kind of, like, new title. Mike, depending on if Zach Ether stays or not, maybe he becomes the head of recruiting or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, like, co-offensive coordinator or something, yeah? We all know what that is, right? When somebody's a co-head coach, we know what that is, okay? It's just a title, and it's a pay raise. But it makes everybody feel good, keeps everybody happy. Do it. I don't care. Just as whatever right. you got to do to keep Cadillac. Right. I mean, and I would love to see Cadillac around even longer. Um, I mean, he stayed around from you know the Gus Malzahn era to the Brian Harson era. I mean, how cool would it be to span to another coaching era? And you know, it's very proven that we first know how to recruit running backs. Even with this terrible offensive line, we're still doing well in the running back room. And then you got on top of that. Now he's showing hey, I can step into these big leadership roles and you know get these guys motivated. To me, that's I don't know how much what more else you can want for the day from the all, dude. All, all you gotta do is all right. So he got Tank, who's amazing. He got Jarquez, who was a diamond in the rough. Right, Jarquez is a right. stud, and Cadillac got him. And then we would have had the Citizen kid from Louisiana, except I think I don't you know Harson didn't help at all on that. And then we didn't have our NIL deal together, so he went to Miami. So mm. that kid was a stud um, last year in the recruiting cycle. And he got Damari Austin, who's a four-star. Mm-hmm. And we could have had Judkins. Apparently, we all we had to do was offer Judkins, and that was more Harson, who's yeah. killing it at Ole Miss. So, I mean, I, I, you're not, you're not like, keeping Cadillac just to do anybody favors. He's actually good at his job. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Anyways, well, I know we're – what are we talking about? Is this A&M? <laughs> no, this is A&M. Okay, sorry. Sorry, everybody. I mean, I think we're still talk- talking general stuff because we're thinking, you know, you know, for this Texas A&M game, but we're also thinking, you know, for the rest of the season, how do we, you know, get some sort of momentum and, you know, going into the next year? Because ultimately, you, me, Auburn fans – what we truly want is to build that momentum so that we feel better going into next year. Because goodness knows, you know, last year we had we were so close to beating Bama, but every other game before that that we had lost, it, it was just a downward spiral. It felt like, and so I, I can, I can, I really hope we can start building back up so that it makes you know the twenty twenty three season 
that much better. And I think this Texas A&M game, to kind of bring everything back, is one of those really big games for us where we can beat them. They're a big name profile team and they're coming to our house and it's a night game and it's Cadillac. You got, you got so much going for you. You can feel the excitement getting ramped up little bit by little bit until we play this game. And you got to know the players are ready for this game. They're, they're going to be at the, the point of almost, you know, a week and a half, two weeks of, of being under this, this uh, new head, you know, this new coaching staff and all that, that you know, kind of shaped up to be a little bit better spot than kind of where we were at with the Mississippi state. And look how we did against Mississippi state. We put things together despite the, chaos and the I mean truly I mean I think what was it Cadillac said he got maybe 10 hours of sleep the whole week that's the kind of chaos and and how much work that went into preparing for Mississippi State and now guess what he gets to have a you know, quote-unquote regular week against Texas A&M so I give us a little bit better of a fighting chance uh, especially being at home yeah, I, I think that I actually hope we get made fun of on the internet after Saturday's game because what I mean by that is um, I, I hope we we win the game. That stadium is going to be electric if we do. And I think, yeah. you know, other call, other teams are going to be making fun of Look at Auburn celebrating a four, their fourth win. You gotta, I hope we do. I, uh, I think – so I'm going to make a bold prediction. If we beat Texas A&M by more than one score, we're rushing the field. It doesn't matter. Like, we're rushing the field. You can that, just. There will be people that will try. There's no doubt. Um, I, I just hope Alabama, Alabama receivers get a little scared when that happens. I hope none of them are <laughs> at the game. But um, I, I, um, I, I definitely, man, I, I think we went by more than 17. I'm going to go ahead and spill the beans. I think that. Woo. I just think it's. I, I mean, think about it, dude. So Ole Miss, Tank Catalog, mm-hmm. had a huge run for a touchdown. I don't know if he did against Arkansas and missed the game. This game, he had another huge run for a touch. Like, we're dialing up huge plays for our playmakers. Right. Um, we just got to be a little more consistent. And I think the Cowbells call some false starts that don't happen in Jordan Hare Stadium. Mm-hmm. Robbie's cleaned up his turnovers. Um, I just, I think we win, man. I think the environment is just going to be so electric. The most electric environment for a three win team ever. <laughs> yeah, if, that's true. If what. If what I think happens happens, you sell that to a recruit every day. You're like, can you imagine if we were actually eight and zero? Right. Like, this was an environment for a three win football team. Mm-hmm. Picture what it would be if you come here and we're winning. Right. And, and and really, in my mind, the only missing piece is a coaching staff and a little bit of recruiting and some transfer portals. Those three things, and we're we're at a much better spot. Yeah, I mean, look at LSU. LSU, they didn't have enough people really to, and credit to them because A and M pretended like they didn't have enough players and they they missed out on their bowl game. LSU genuinely barely had enough players to field a, a team for a bowl game and they played. And look at them now; they mm-hmm. they're in the driver's seat. They hired a good coach, got some good transfer portal players, and they most likely are going to win the SEC in year yeah. one. Wow! And I wow. would I would argue. With Lane being in the SEC already, Lane Kiffin might even be able to do a little better than Brian Kelly. Mm. Um, you got to get the right players. Mm-hmm. But if he gets the right players, I think he could be even more successful because he's already here doing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, you attack the transfer portal, you get some instant – I'm thinking offensive linemen right now. But I'm sure there's other positions that we can go after that we really desperately need. And you're at a – much better spot and you know you can see even this year you know you change a few things you 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 get the guys playing for the full 60 minutes which apparently they weren't really doing this whole season you know with uh, Cadillac kind of alluding to that I I think you're you're really you're truly right there you're right there with the best of them and guess what next year also you got Bama and Georgia coming to your house and if we have any semblance of a good team you got to think we're we're coming out guns blazing um, next year. I, and I obviously Lane's my top option, but I think Lane, here's what I think he does, and, and then I'll move on from him. I think you can actually potentially be competitive next year against Georgia and Bam out. I, okay. think, I think there are other coaches 
who long term could be fan, like Lanning is actually being mentioned, or Oregon coach because he apparently yeah. wants to get back south. I think Lanning next year you're not super competitive against uh, Georgia and Alabama, but you get a top ten recruiting class. I think he's more of a two year, three year project. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Lane is more of a you could win right now, but Lane could also get antsy and go for the NFL again, right? Um, so there's pros and cons to everybody, but I, th- I think if you bring in Lane next year, I think you're competitive in every game you play. You're probably right. I mean, he's shown that he can put up a good fight. He just against, dials up plays that nobody yeah. else can dial up. Right. And I think that's the brilliance of kind of going to Lane. And that's not even to mention, you know, the the amount of just players that he can get that are so top talented. I mean, you kind of put all that together at a school that has, I mean, everybody's probably going to say, well, you know, look at Ole Miss. They're better than Auburn right now. Yeah, but not historically. Yeah, right now they are, but I mean, so is Baylor. I mean, right? <laughs> would you? I mean, no, no offense to Baylor. I keep yeah. offending people, right? <laughs> Liberty. Okay, if you want to use <laughs> Ole Miss's logic right now, because this is what yeah. Ole Miss fans are doing, they are like, Auburn, oh, Ole Miss is a better program. Look at us right now. Yeah, so yeah. is Liberty. So if you're looking at two coaches that are like, hey, you can go to Liberty, you can go to Auburn. What are they choosing? Yeah. I mean, if we're going to use that logic, mm-hmm. and I always I say this, I, I'm getting fired up here, AJ. Listen. Yeah. It, here's what I would say, because Ole Miss fans are getting, they are, they're getting really like, Auburn, are you kidding? We're way better than Auburn. I'm yeah. like, okay, reverse this. If Lane Kiffin is at Auburn having the exact same success and y'all's job became available, is there any talk of him coming to y'all? No. no. None. Exactly. That, and this is by Vegas. Like, Vegas people are saying this. The people that know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> they, the, their Lane their butts, not, the, that's their job. Their butts are on the line yeah. if they're wrong. Lane would not be on Ole Miss's right. They would not. They would not be having this convo. This would not be a convo. That's all you need to know um, about the programs. Right. So, okay. I'm done. All right. Not so no, no, I know. Right. I can talk about coaching all day with you know who are we going after, but I think to kind of wrap that up, I think Auburn is. I mean, they they've got to in the next few weeks be talking to to teams because. Or, you know, to coaches, you know, try to figure out who is our next guy. Um, and to me, I think we have to go after a big name because, I, you know, thinking back on, you know, even Gus Malzahn wasn't that big of a splash. I mean, it was, he was offensive coordinator, went to Arkansas State for a year, kind of untested as a head coach, ended up having some success, obviously, but we haven't gone after, you know, the big name. And so that's honestly another request for a head coach that we go after a, a little bit bigger. Let me ask you one quick question. Do you think the deal will be done by the Iron Bowl? We won't know about it, but do you think the, well, the, deal, mm, the deal will be done by You think the day after the Iron Bowl we know who our coach is? I think it's going to be really, really close. It depends on if we go after, say, you know, I'm just thinking about, say, we do go after Lane Kiffin and we somehow do that. I, I think Lane Kiffin sticks it out and, say, potentially goes to the playoffs or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, if they have that great of an end of the season, I think he finishes out with that team. But do you, th- but do you think? Th- okay, so if they make the playoffs, we still wouldn't know. But would the deal be done? Uh, maybe under the table. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it would be official. You know what? It could though? be. It, it could it, be though. You know what? Though we can't wait that out. If he were to somehow make the playoffs, we can't like with the transfer port. We can't wait that out. Man, this gets real sticky with already signing day. Right. No, it really does, and I think that's part of the urgency of why we had to fire Harson so quickly is we we knew this is a crucial few weeks left of the season yeah. and if recruits see the season going downwards and we're still sticking with Harson yeah I mean they know that he's going to get fired at the end of the season but that changes the recruits mindset now they know for sure you know we got a new coaching staff coming our way and guess what which is great you know think about Cadillac and Zach Etheridge is they they know how to recruit for Auburn. They're not going to recruit for whatever that coaching staff is. They're going to say, come to Auburn because you love Auburn. And these are the great things why you should love Auburn. And what better person to do that than both of them? And by the way, we apparently have $13 million in our NIL account. So Right, and we can just know, throw that. Doesn't yeah. hurt. Just keep <laughs> slinging that number around, right? Right. And, and you got to think, you know, football is the main one that's going to get most of that. You, know, you got basketball, too, and probably some – baseball and softball and maybe other sports as well but you know that's going to be a main one is you know football so 
All right, Jared, let's get into our players to watch for this week. Uh, let's start out with offense. Who are you going to be watching on offense for Auburn? Um, hmm. I'm going to I'm going to probably make you mad and go against go out of the box here. I'm going to watch Will Will Friend, man. I'm going to see Ooh. what he I know, not a player, right? I like uh, it. And, and Ike, I want to give Ike credit. Apparently, he also I think he's more kind of the quote-unquote passing game coordinator, if you will, but um I want to see if Will Friend he he found about 3 running plays that worked really well. I want to mm-hmm. see if he can get that up to 6 or 7 um so that we don't fall behind. Can he can he fine tune this a little bit of some things we do really well. Robbie does really well and, you know, add, add more to that. We did like three things. Well, last week, let's do six things. Well, right. Um, you know, see if he can do that and stick with it. Don't get pass happy. Um, I don't think he will. And, uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on him. Cause I think that will make everyone else on the field a lot better. If he does what he did back at Mississippi state. Right. Um, the the guys I'm gonna be watching wide receivers honestly because they they let me down a little bit. Um, now I do ultimately think that was somewhat a little bit on Robbie last week, but I think if you get the wide receivers engaged and working well with Robbie, I mean it, that that's just a recipe for a huge success here uh, because as much as Will Friend can say dial up, you know at certain times, you know Robbie Ashford runs or you know some wildcat stuff with tank bigsby i think you also have to have at least a decent amount of passing game so as long as we have something that was better than what we had against mississippi state you know i say we're we're kind of we're getting there we're moving towards that that success that i think could get us the victory against texas a&m speaking of the wildcat with tank you you gotta think that he's actually gonna give that to robbie before the season's up right uh-huh. You think we run that again, and we do probably give it to Robbie for a throw? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't throw that in there just for fun. You you throw that in there for the Iron Bowl or something. You know. Yeah, that that that's yeah, that could be a really good play. Right. Um. All right, defensive players. Who are you gonna be watching? Defensive players. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Cam Riley. Uh, he played a Ooh, good. Yeah. I not yeah, heard yeah. him in a while. He played he played a good bit on Saturday, and I want to figure out was that because they were mostly passing, or do we think Cam has earned that spot to be uh-huh. more playing time? Because we need major help there, and um, maybe he's the guy. Maybe he's making a step forward, and um, yeah. So A and M's going to run the ball way more than Mississippi State did. Cam's not a big dude, mm-hmm. um, but really, if you just main thing is just filling the gap. So yeah. And Cam Riley, I think for a little bit of this season, has been a little injured. So he he seems to be back. I mean, he even got a tackle for loss uh, this last week. And, and, you know, that's the kind of stuff, you know, this next round of guys. Because I think you and I are already starting to look a little bit forward. Obviously, you want to do good this season. But the the players that will be here next season, you want to get them the reps and the uh practice that they need and what better place to practice than an actual game when you know ultimately it doesn't matter i mean sure could we go to a bowl game if we have an incredible finish yeah but that's probably not going to happen and that's okay so i I like your pick um the guy i'm gonna be watching on defense really is uh what was his name uh defensive lineman that really stuffed holes and jeremiah wright that's the guy and he had you know that personal foul i I, I saw some really good things with him. Now, was he going way past the whistle? Yes, but that's okay. In my book, he's playing hard, and I'm I'm fine with that. I want to see more of him out there. So, Jeremiah Wright's my guy. All right, special teams. Who are you going to be watching, Jared? Um, McPherson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to be watching him. I, I, nothing against honors. I just listen. Get get the best kicker in high school on the field. Let's just see what he can do, even if it's just kickoffs. Right. Because um, if honors really is having issues, you know, you want to preserve the leg, right? Um, you know, if he's not, if he's having some problem where he can't do what he used to could do, I mean, who's to say in the overtime, you know, that didn't bother him a little bit um, that he's yeah. had kickoffs and and kick field goals throughout the games. Let's just get the young kid in there, see how he can do, get him. Uh, custom to SEC football, so he's not like thrown into it next year without any experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 
I want to see him on kickoffs because really at this point you've got nothing to to lose. Um, it's not like he's going to burn a you know red shirt or anything. He's going to be fine. So play him. Um, so the guy on special teams I'll be watching is Dark West Hunter, which you may be like, why are you picking him? Well, think about kickoffs this year. Um, he has been if he gets a little bit of a crease, he's getting up to like the 30, 40 yard line. And he's just, you know, he's got that breakaway speed. Think about, uh, I saw a stat. He's one of the, I think the only uh, running back this year that has had more than, I think it was like a 50 yard pass, two of them uh, for touchdowns. And you're like, that's awesome. That shows you he's got that breakaway speed that can be used on these kickoffs. And unfortunately we haven't gotten to see that. So I want Jerk was to do that. All right, let's get into our score predictions. You already kind of revealed your your hand a little bit. Uh, you predicted us to win 17 points or potentially more. Sticking with that? Is that what you're still feeling? Yes, I think we win by 17 or more. Wow. Okay, how do you see us doing that? Is it I don't because know. Don't our defense me, don't is strong? Justify, I'm <laughs> <laughs> don't let me justify my, job. my crazy... I lost coffee to you, okay? I said Calzado was going to be the starter. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that it's more about how bad A&M is. Um, I do think that the team, the Auburn team now believes a little bit, so I think that they're going to have a little more offensive success than they've been having. Um, I think that Will Friend may have figured out some plays that work. Now, A&M is probably a little better defense than Mississippi State, um, but it's at home. It's going to be crazy. Cadillacs, you know, coaching, the fan, it's just going to be electric. Now, if they come out and get up on a 17 nothing in the first quarter, okay, all bets are off that the fans will be out of it. But I just, man, I just think it's going to be a crazy atmosphere. And yeah. I just think A&M's pretty much a train wreck right now. Um, we are losing and not a good football team, but we're not a train wreck, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I heard that these are all rumors. I heard they had to kick two other players off and that their true freshman quarterback may be thinking about entering the portal, and he's the oh one that started gosh. last week. So uh, if that's true, it's just not good. We need to win this game. <laughs> um, as bad as we are, they are equally as bad. It's at home. We need this. Yeah, I, I think we need this. And, and I've said this before in, in rough seasons. I, I feel like we need this for the players, but it's also for the fans. Um, and if there's any game to do it, this is a one to do it when Texas A&M has the same record as you three and six. And uh, you're, you're actually the one favorite in this, which I, it's been so long since we've actually been favored in a game and it feels weird. Um, I mean, even to be favored by two points, that feels like a win in my books. Like we have a chance <laughs> and even against Mississippi state, I, I don't know if we had a chance, but it looked like we did. And we got the lead, so you gotta you gotta think these players are really truly laying their guts on the line. I mean, they are playing so hard for Cadillac, and, and they're gonna have to do it again against Texas A&M. And guess what, Jimbo, like Lane Kiffin said a couple weeks ago, is a clown, and I think Auburn can make him a clown even more. Um, kind of like this game kind of reminds me of going back to you know games where. We, you know, we could potentially, you know, put the, not necessarily fire Jimbo, but, you know, put the final true nail in the coffin for Jimbo so that, you know, in a couple of years when that buyout's not 85 million or whatever crazy an amount it is for Jimbo, he might get fired. And, and Auburn can be like, yeah, we helped you. You're we, welcome. We need to win this game and have a great atmosphere because, uh, they're they're gonna have like probably twelve five stars that may contemplate transferring. Yeah, uh, and we hey, hey we could swoop you, in. Did, did you like what you see? <laughs> I mean, come on down yeah. the plains, right? So um, we we I'll go guaranteed we win this ball game. There's no we don't. Yeah, lose. yeah. And my official score prediction is we win by ten points. I I think we've got a chance at you know, a two score game, and this team feels like they they can do it i mean the amount of emotions that i went through in the last little bit of the the previous game against mississippi state i think shows me that that these players if i'm feeling it as a fan you you got to believe that these players are feeling like they can win um and 
they know there's blood in the water with Texas A&M. All right, let's get into our last little segment of the day, an Auburn fan perspective of, of the SEC. And uh, just like normal, all craziness happened <laughs> this week. Uh, Kentucky beat uh, Missouri 21-17. to Not a whole lot to talk about there. Florida, they beat the team we're about to face, Texas A&M, 41-24. to I mean, what has happened to Texas A&M? Like, for Florida, who is a 5-4 and four team, they're not even that good. And for Texas A&M to be, yeah, it's just crazy, to lose by, what is that, 15 points? <laughs> At Texas wow. A&M. Yeah. Like, it is College Station, you know, that 12th man thing that they've got there. The, the 12th man has not helped them, which is truly incredible because I've been to that stadium. It can get loud. It can get raucous, but obviously Florida can come in there and just clean you out. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, man. Uh, all right, so let's get into some of the more crazy games. Texas or Tennessee versus uh, Georgia. Yeah, number one versus number three. Uh, that got out of hand a little quicker than I was expecting. <laughs> When when I started getting score updates for this one, I was on the road, and I was like, "What the heck?" It is now like you know twenty eight to six. This is not good. <laughs> what is happening? And man, I am uh, I'm very thankful that I was not that Texas or Tennessee team because you got to think like they they were thinking, "Wow, we can come in here beat Georgia," and Georgia's like, Haha, "Yeah, not today, not today," and crush all hopes of of Tennessee maybe not all hopes I think Tennessee can still I don't know about you but I think they can still manage to go to the playoffs and you know make their run it was I think ultimately a a matter of time for them that they were going to lose just because they haven't had the winning culture and I think there is something to be said for a winning culture that every week you come into it and you're thinking you can win every week and you know, you face a really tough team like Georgia, and they they kind of put you in your place a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, a couple of things happened. Tennessee missed on about three touchdown passes that that guy doesn't usually miss. I think he got a little rattled. I mean, it's hard not to be rattled. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when you go to an SEC stadium against a good team, it's the biggest game, biggest game of your university in probably 15 years. It's the biggest game you've ever played in. You're on the road. Um, so, yeah, they missed on some things, and Georgia didn't miss. Georgia had been missing on some of those deep passes, and they connected. So, um, you know, give them credit. Tennessee, uh, be interesting to see if they played at the neutral site again, what would happen. Mm. I, I still think, I mean, Tennessee's offense was equal to the LSU 2019 offense. Mm-hmm. going into that game um yeah. and i think tennessee i think they now have to worry about style points but if they went out and went out convincingly depending on what else happens yeah i think they could still make the playoffs yeah and and i'm just looking at their schedule they've got missouri yeah they're not losing. south carolina and vandy i yeah. think they win all those like there's yeah, there's no doubt in my mind like they're they're already a 21 point favorite against missouri next week yeah, yeah they're gonna so yeah, they're gonna, which by the way missouri i think just extended Drinkowitz's contract. I'm like, what? He lost to Harson. What? What? <laughs> I think he lost to No Harson. way, dude. Yeah, they just extended this contract. So good for them. But um, thanks, thanks, and we look forward to beating you in however many more years that we actually yeah, play. You. Yeah, no, right. Uh, I think um, you could tell Tennessee was a little shell shock. Yeah. Um, I predicted Tennessee to win that game. I still, I think if they played on a neutral site, it'd be because here's the deal: like Georgia got a big. Georgia only scored three points in the second half. Mm-hmm. Tennessee just couldn't. That D smother, and that Georgia D, whatever they do, they smother you. But I think that, you know, and it's hard to beat a team twice, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, we're, enough about them. But, yeah, I think that uh, there's a possibility they get in. Right. And there could be an awesome rematch, I feel like. A rematch of Tennessee-Georgia is feel like it's kind of brewing. Um, all right, another crazy game. <laughs> and this one caught me so off guard was Liberty beat Arkansas. Are you kidding me? That one like, hurts. are you kidding me? Like, With their Auburn. third string quarterback, AJ. <sighs> Liberty had their third. I mean, he had played the week before, but he is their third string quarterback. Wow. Liberty. Beat Liberty. an SEC school. At, like, I think Liberty school. beating any SEC school is a huge feat, but doing it against Arkansas. 
First off, right. why do but when are big schools gonna learn? Why do you skip? Maybe they didn't know Hugh Freeze. Maybe when they scheduled this, he wasn't there yet. I don't know. But like, why do you schedule team like App State? I mean, why is A and M playing Appalachian State? Yeah. Appalachian State can beat you. Yep. You're having to pay them a million dollars to come play and possibly. <laughs> like, if you're exactly. gonna do it, play Mercer. <laughs> I, mean, that's I know. How you do this. <laughs> Man, what a crazy world. And and hey, you know. Auburn fans are looking at that and licking their chops with Hugh Freeze over at Liberty <coughs> and saying, he can beat an SEC team, and guess what? He's doing it with way less talent than what he'll have any other uh, SEC school. Oh, the only thing holding Hugh's back is his past. I mean, Hugh, Hugh may be a better coach than Lane, wow. um, but the his past is, you know, are, are people, are the powers that be okay with that? I mean, I'm not going to say one way or the other, but, um, yeah, that's uh, that's the only thing holding Hugh back. Right. Um, and then Alabama versus LSU. Uh, that game went to overtime, and uh, LSU was really – I mean, they were giving it to Alabama, and I loved it so much. It was a back-and-forth, back-and-forth kind of matchup, and uh, Bama just couldn't hang on. <laughs> and this is – how many times have you said it? Bama has two losses in a season, in the regular season. Not many times in the Saban era. And we get to say it now. And I – And they're playing Ole Miss fan, coming up. So, oh, I mean, it could, it could theoretically – I mean, I, I think they beat Ole Miss, but it could be three. Yeah. I mean, it's a strong – and, and you got the Iron Bowl. But that's at – I mean, that's at Ole Miss. So, yeah, you got to give the little nod, potentially. I, I've seen Ole Miss play, and, and this is why I like Wayne Moore. He, I, they're lacking. They're lacking some stuff. They're having to – they're having to manufacture rushing yards with a non-rushing quarterback. I just I don't think they'll mm. keep up with Alabama, but um, but they could. I mean, yeah. you're right. They already got two losses, and they're about to play an eight-win Ole Miss team. So, ha, <laughs> wow, what what a time, man. Um, and I think that about does it for uh, Auburn fans' perspective. Because let's be honest, South Carolina Vandy, I don't care. <laughs> it, Even though it, South Carolina did win. Here's how, and you know, Harson would probably still be here if we did this, so I don't know. But um, if Robbie doesn't fumble the ball against LSU when they returned it for a touchdown, we we probably yeah. smother them, and mm-hmm. they're now going to go on and probably win the West. So that's just it's what, so, a, oh my God. what a swing though, because ultimately, yeah, like you said, you have that one play that gave LSU all that momentum. I mean, I was in that stadium for the LSU Auburn game. Auburn fans were they were bonkers. That oh, it game. was over. Like we were, they couldn't do anything. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that gave them the life, and ultimately won. So, and now they're gonna go, and they got smoked by Tennessee. Like Tennessee blew them out at their place, and yeah, they've gotten things together, man. Man, this is uh, this has been a weird year for the SEC. Um, I feel like the the play has come down a lot, besides maybe a couple teams that have elevated themselves, like Tennessee and Georgia. But this is a weird year. I mean, for it'd have been a good year SEC to be a West, good team. Right, everybody, everybody's down. Um, I think overall in college football, it's a little. I mean, Ohio State beat Northwestern like twenty-one to seven. I mean, that's for Ohio State to be number two in the country. You expect more and, than that. And Northwestern is not. Good They're not good. I think they have like what maybe one no. win this season. <laughs> Clemson got smoked by Notre Dame, and Notre yeah. Dame lost. I mean, Notre Dame lost to Marshall, didn't they? I mean, it's it's like yeah, it's a uh, it's a weird year. It would have been a really good year to be good. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. I feel like you could have easily capitalized off of some of these teams looking really bad. Yeah, and gonna... you know, it's it's very unfortunate it's kind of how, how things kind of played out this year. All right, Jerry, before we get out of here, how can the people stay in touch with you? You can find me on Facebook under my name, Jared Davis. And you can find me on Twitter at A-J-A-Y, J-A-Y underscore. It's always great to be an Auburn Tiger and War Eagle. War Eagle. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E2C Network. On your way out, I want to remind you to stop by E2Cnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for all our content across our podcast, YouTube channel, and much more. To stay up to date with us, make sure you're following social media accounts such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. While our content here may always be Auburn sports heavy, if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. War Eagle.